Welcome to LabMins.com and a lab video series on Cisco and XOS. This is Metha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of an XOS videos, you can visit our website under Data Center section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. So you got a new Nexus switch that you just unboxed. You may have put it in either a staging area or racked it in an actual data center rack, hopefully with redundant power connections. The switch came up and now ready to be configured. So what do we do? In the next two videos, we will look at different methods to bootstrap and initialize a, an XOS switch. We will also be enabling basic network services on the switch to prep it for further configuration. Let's get started. When it comes to Cisco and XOS switch, you generally have three ways to configure the switch. First is command line or CLI. Second is using API, which is based on NetConf XML. And the third is using DCNM or Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller. But if what you have is a switch that has no configuration, your only option is pretty much the CLI. So what you would need is a console access, either via a direct console cable or through a console or terminal server. Once the switch is booted up, you have three options to begin your configuration. The first option is using setup utility, which is an interactive process, and you will see that in a second, that will step you through some essential switch configuration. The second is the manual configuration, so you'll be configuring everything on your own. And the third option is using Power On Auto Provisioning, or POAP, which is an automated way to bring up the switch with a desired configuration and software image. We will look at the first two options in this video and have the next video dedicated to POAP. Let's take a look at our lab setup. We have two Nexus 9332C switches, as shown in this box right here, a rectangle box. Their management interfaces are connected to an out-of-band management subnet on our lab switch, switch one. And that subnet is on VLAN 99 with the IP of 172.16.99.0/24. While not mandatory, this is recommended to give you another way to access your switches should you lose in-band access to them. For us, this is the only connection that we have right now in our lab. These two switches have been powered on with no startup configuration. They are positioned to eventually be our data center core switches. We have our lab switch, switch one that we are currently using as a default gateway of our out-of-band switch as well as our server VLAN, VLAN 32 with the subnet 172.16.32.0.24 and in that subnet we have our Windows domain controller, Win2K DC1 right here which also acts as our DNS and file server. On switch 1 we have a loopback 0, 172.16.0.1 and it has access to the internet. So that is our lab setup, fairly simple. We're going to be looking at the first method, which is setup utility. And that is what we will be using for our first switch, LMC1. When a switch with no startup config comes up, it will automatically launch a POAP process trying to find a valuable configuration, which is the third option or method that we mentioned earlier. If you have no intention to leverage POAP, which is the case for us right now, we can go ahead and disable it. Let me bring up console to our switch C1, and you can see right here. On the console output, you see pretty much everything is pointing to POAP related activity. What we would do now is to stop this process, and we will revisit POAP in the next video. If you hit enter, you can see to abort. Power on auto provisioning. Enter yes. You can type in skip to bypass the password and basic configuration. And you can enter no to continue with the POAP. For us, we want to terminate it or stop it. We'll type in yes. And you can see it is currently disabling POAP. Let's give it a couple of minutes here. And it looks like as part of that, it disabled LLDP as well.